Hi, this is Law Hero and this is how to pass the FE1 exam in five steps. So the first step is not to learn by heart because when you learn by heart, you're going to set yourself up for a fall because you won't be able to change your answers when it doesn't go your way. In my notes at lawhero.eu, if you go to company law, you'll see that there is a free single legal personality document which you can download and this gives you a really good example of how the, the, the legal principles are set out very, very clearly and the facts. Second tip is timing. So normally the exams are from half nine to half twelve in the red cow and this means that um, you have three hours, five questions. So what I would do is set aside 10 minutes at the start to structure your answer and uh, why this is important is because the more your answer is structured, the more you're going to get the examiner on side and the more you're going to answer the question in a relevant manner. And so start with your strongest first. Um, so that gives you basically 35 minutes per question for five questions. If you feel like it's coming up to half 12 and you haven't finished your final essay, just write bullet points of the main points of your argument. Tip number three is the style of questions. So in the FU1, you're either going to get an essay style question or a problem question. Um, in the essay style question, you will be asked to either discuss or explain or basically take a side in an argument. This is very nice for people who have kind of um, a more academic side and they want to show how they tease out um, a specific you know, a specific concept, for example, when does a floating charge crystallize? This is really nice because you can go through the whole case law on um, crystallization of floating charges and how book debts, for example, have been contentious down through the years. So you can go through that and it's really, really nice and really succinct, you can get very high marks. Normally there'll be four essays, four problem questions on the exam, roughly. There could be a deviation from that. But what it means is, is that just know your strengths, know if you're better answering an essay question or if you're answering a problem question. I would just say with the essay question, when you see the keyword like floating charge, don't go off on a tangent because, for example, Courtney might say, um, the crystallization of a floating charge in Ireland, which means that he is trying to get you to concentrate on Irish um, jurisprudence rather than Irish English jurisprudence. So problem questions uh, normally there are, for example, in company law, I'll keep referring to company law, but there might be three directors and they all own shares in the company. Okay, fine. Don't go digging for facts. The facts are going to be very, very simple. What's very important that the legal principle comes out. So normally, um, for example, share transfer, there'll be uh, three shareholders. One is, um, uh, one is living in the US and has just sold their shares to to somebody in the local town. Are the current directors entitled to refuse um, to register the transfer of those shares? So that's very, very plain what the issue is there. Don't go off going, oh, no, no, the fact that she's in the US and there might be administrative difficulties and all that. That's not what he's looking for. He wants to see, do you understand the discretion of a director either to register shares or not? And this will either be in the constitution if they've deviated from the act or the act might apply in a mandatory way. So know what he's looking for, basically is what I'm trying to say. Tip number four is to look at the marks allocation. Sometimes the questions are divided into two parts. You have to be very careful how much time you dedicate and dedicate the time proportionately to whichever marks are given. Okay, so we touched on it earlier, how to answer the question. Obviously with an essay, your structure is very important. There needs to be logic. But when it comes to problem questions in Ireland, we have a fail-safe way of answering problem questions. And this is known as ILAC or Introduction Law Application Conclusion. This is really boring, but it's actually very handy when you're losing your marbles in an exam. So what Okay, I hope that helped. Um, There's literally just five... Um, sure far away to pass the exam if you can actually get the administrative side of doing the exam right as well as learning the legal principles you are going to pass it because it is a formula it's like doing your driving test 
um, you need to learn the formula and then you are sure to pass it. If you don't have the basics and if you don't have like the administrative side sussed, like the timing, the structure of the answer, you're not going to pass the exam. It's going to be a waste of a hundred odd euro and you're going to have to repeat it. It's not very nice to repeat it. So, okay, best to look at your exam. This is Law Hero. Remember to go to lawhero.eu for more information. Thank you and subscribe.